everyone, I'm Lindsay Smith, and this week our guest on the Outlet Podcast is former Phoenix Sun and current member of the Locomotive Kuban, Alan Williams, Big Sauce. How are you? Fantastic. Really happy to be back on here with, with you guys and uh, excited to talk to Suns fans and, and everybody like that, so super happy to be here. I just want to let you know, when I told everyone that you were going to be the guest this week, literally mm-hmm. everybody from everyone at the Suns organization to our fan base, we're so excited to get to hear from you again and get to see your face and talk some Suns basketball. So we're all so thankful that you were able to take a little bit of time and join us today. Thanks for having me. Definitely appreciate it. All right. So you have been a Phoenix Suns fan for a really long time. We like to call you the Phoenix Sun, S O. So let's go back down memory lane. What are some of your favorite memories as a fan of the Phoenix Suns? Oh, as a fan of the Phoenix Suns. That's a, I mean, I, I was luckily and luckily I was able to go to a lot of Suns games growing up. Um, I definitely say the semifinal runs, uh, Western Conference champion, um, were, were really the most memorable ones for me. Obviously, anything involving Steve Nash and Amari Stoudemire was just – magical um at the time um but uh to, if i had to put one down i don't know if i could honestly it was just the memories and the passion that the city kind of had when the suns were really good and, and obviously one of the best teams in the nba so just being able to be a part of that and to be able to embrace that um, i think it did a lot for my own personal love of basketball and uh, i think it did a lot for the city too so it was cool if you could pick one favorite sun player who would it be and why is it is it current going to be with somebody on the current team or did Absolutely. it have to be? It'll be Devin Booker. It would be Devin Booker. He's that's that's my guy. So obviously, I gotta. I think I have to say that one. Yeah, absolutely. Let's go in a little bit more on your relationship with Devin. What has that been like? Staying connected even when you're far away. Sometimes playing in Russia. Sometimes over like all overseas when oh. you're not in Phoenix. How have you guys been able to stay connected throughout the years? Um, I mean, FaceTime is, is, a, is an amazing thing, you know what I'm saying? So every once in a while, I'll pick up the phone, I'll call him, he'll call me to check in, um, just talk stuff. If I see something happen in a game, I'll text him right away. He says, oh, man, this should happen or that should happen type of thing, just because I'm still obviously keeping tabs on everything still going on there. And um, But, uh, yeah, you know, try to, you know what I mean, with times like this, want to make sure that we were all being safe and self-isolating. So I know when I came back, I spent my time self-isolated, and then I finally got a chance to see him. Um, uh, a couple weeks ago, and you know what I'm saying everything's good, and just, just you know, keeping communication, FaceTime, and phone calls, and text messages, and stuff like that, really allowed us to just continue to be good friends. So, I love that. I'm so glad that you guys are able to stay connected because I know when you were playing with the Suns, you guys were super tight. I loved seeing all of the support you showed for him, and vice versa that he showed for you. In sure. keeping up with his career, what, where have you seen the biggest growth from him? Because this year was pretty substantial for Devin. I think um, the biggest growth I've seen is just his, his demand out of the other players on his team. You know what I mean? He, he, he leads by example. He works his butt off all the time. And um, I just think it's just a continual development in this game. It's, it's his leadership ability now to, to really be the – obviously was the favorite franchise before, but now it's, it's, it's a done deal. You know what I'm saying? He's the team's first all-star since – I mean, I don't, I don't know when, you know what I mean? So to be able to have that, it's a, it's a lot of pressure, I'm sure, but he thrives in it, and he's just continued to just be really good, you know, growing. It's just it's, it's really fun to see how good he's gotten and just even more fun to imagine how good he can really be and how good that, that Suns seemed to be because they had a really hot start this year. Yeah, I think all of uh, Suns fans can agree with that sentiment. So we are going to get into – Devin and the all-star appearance a little bit later in the podcast but before we do that I want to know um your favorite memories as a member of the Phoenix Suns take us back to your time with the team and and what really stood out to you or what you enjoyed the most about it um just going back one game I think uh was like really special we played the Celtics Uh, I want to say it was like towards the end of the season um and that's when Tyler Eulis hit the game-winning shot. A chance to win, Eulis! Yeah! Unbelievable! And uh, just that whole game, it was just so back and forth, and everybody kind of wrote us off because we were playing with guys that didn't have a lot of minutes the whole season, and we were just kind of just 
finishing up the season, but still really scrappy. And obviously Earl in, instilled that scrappiness in us. And um, just that whole environment and crazy game because so so many there's so many Boston Celtics fans in the world, especially in Phoenix, because people move from wherever to, to live here. And so we get there and the arena is fully packed. And it's probably 70% Phoenix Suns fans. There's a large group of Celtics fans and they were cheering for the Celtics the whole game and then it just kind of turned, you know what I mean? And they felt that, you know what I'm saying, we were pulling away with it and it got, you know what I'm saying, all the way down to the last shot. And it was it was really crazy to, to see the environment, how crazy it was. And that's the one game I think that stands out. Um, there's a lot of special times that I had and I could go on about, but that's the one for sure. Well, keep going. We want to hear all of this. Yeah. What about reaction, interactions with fans too? Yeah, obviously, um, a 70 point game was really special. That was like super cool, obviously, because how many times has that happened ever? And um, that's going to be that's gonna be a documentary one day, I'm sure. Um, that game and, and everything leading up to that game kind of thing was was just was crazy. So um, that was fun. And then obviously, you know, just being from Phoenix, getting a chance to throw on a Suns jersey and represent my city um, was just it was a dream come true. You know, people live for those moments and, and fight their whole life for it. And I was luckily had the chance to be able to do that and play for the Suns and, and give everything I thought we had to the organization that I was in love with from a kid. So um, best fans in the NBA, hands down. And uh, just really was, was a special time for me. When you come back to Phoenix, how fun is it when you run into a Suns fan, like whether you're at a grocery store or out to eat, and they're just like, big sauce, how are you? Awesome. That's why, like, doing something like this is, like, so cool just because it's, like, kind of just reconnecting with the, the fan base and, and, and you guys, obviously, the media team. And, and you know, I still get text messages from people in the organization all the time checking in and stuff like that. So if I go to the grocery store and somebody taps me on my shoulder and asks for a picture, I'm just elated to be able to – to, to, to take a picture with them and, and show that, you know I mean? I still have love for, for everything going on there. So it's, it's really cool to, that, that the people still, I guess, remember me. So it's, it's cool. We're going to take a break and give a little love to our sponsors. So fans, you may be thinking that during this time of social distancing, you don't have to really be worried about whether or not your child is being bullied or bullying others. But we all know that cyberbullying exists and it happens through social media. It happens through text messages and emails. And if you want to learn more about how to protect your kids from cyberbullying or yourself, just head on over to muststopbullying.org for a lot of great tips and help. It's kind of hard to forget the man who started Big Sauce Reaction of the Week within the Phoenix Suns organization. So you know I had to bring this up and you know we have to talk about it. So sure. first and foremost, when or have you always done such big reactions to big plays to support your teammate? I, 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 it's always been like that. I can remember back in high school, um, Arizona Republic front page, we won a state championship. Our teammate makes a game winning three. Oops. Our teammate makes a game winning three. And the picture is literally me jumping on the bench as high as I possibly can jump. And that's just like, it's always been me. You know, I play with so much passion and I love the game so much that I think it just reflects in how I celebrate. It's not to be like showboating or rubbing in somebody else's face. It's just a pure raw emotion that I kind of have. And it just comes out when something crazy happens. And I mean, even when I was at the net, we had a couple of moments on there where we were going wild on the bench. So it's just, I don't know. It's just, it, it, it creates, you know what I'm saying? More fun for the fans, more fun for the team. And, it, it keeps you engaged too. I think that if you're reacting to plays, that means you're literally watching every single play. And uh, it just keeps you engaged. So when your number's called, you're ready to go because you already have that emotion in it. So how much have you seen those reactions kind of change throughout the years? Because I know they've always happened, but it seems <laughs> like they're so much bigger these days. Sometimes it feels like teams even have almost planned dances for when something <laughs> Like, take me into that. How do you decide which one to do? And if a team has rehearsed it, is it like, how do you know which play to, to bring it out on? It's, uh, it's that, those are good questions. I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't say there's a lot to go behind it, but it's recognized as a team. It's just like, okay, 
we're going to do this at this moment and we're all going to start with our left foot. Like Jared Dudley was like the number one, like trying to orchestrator of that, especially when we were in Brooklyn together. He was just like, yeah, we're going to start with our left foot and we're going to swing it this way. We're going to do it for five seconds and all sit back down at the same time. Because obviously the more organized it is, the cooler it looks. And I think with the creativity that people have nowadays and the social media aspect of it, they can create memes and put music to it and have you dance into country one song and hip hop the next one. So I just think that it, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's all about the fan engagement and just keeping it fresh and fun. I think the NBA just does a tremendous job of that. Um, props goes to all the teams and their media department who really understands that, you know what I'm saying? It should be fun. And if we're out there having fun, the people that are watching us do it, they're going to have fun as well. So um, yeah, that's just kind of how it is. Yeah, you made us start almost we almost have a camera that's designated yeah. reactions or we have one camera that's like following the plays, obviously, and mm. it automatically turns over to the bench to catch that reaction because you guys are <laughs> so fun to watch. It's like a oh. second game within the game almost. Yeah. Yeah. And right. I think it does work. I think it does help. Like the end, it creates good energy. So. Yeah, absolutely agree. I know the fans love it, whether they're watching from home or at the arena. So. What we're going to do now, Alan, I'm going to text you some of right. your best or most fun reactions from the Phoenix <clears throat> Suns bench. I want you to watch them and then react to them. So I just sent you the first one. So take a piece of that. Oh, okay. I was like, yo, what am I doing? The lawnmower. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't. First of all, I must say it wasn't a lawnmower. It was oh, yeah. getting in. Yeah, bled at that moment, I think, went off for like five or six in a row. And if you saw what he does and takes the hit and finishes it over Vukovic, who's big as, as, as can be, um, it just, he was in his bag. Like, that was me digging in his bag of tricks. I was like, he was deep in his bag at that point, too. So I had to reach all the way down there. And it may have looked like a lawnmower, and maybe a lawnmower might make sense. It might be a little bit more funny, but I, I will say it definitely wasn't a lawnmower. So. Well, I'm glad you cleared that up because I will tell you when we were trying to figure out names for this, we it was the whole process. Everyone was like, I don't know what exactly is going on. What can we name? Is it to be funny? <laughs> hey, you guys just asked. I definitely want to let y'all know what I was thinking at that time. Well, we know better now. Uh, yeah. But I'm glad you cleared that up for us because I do. These are all names, so I want to know what they actually were and how close we were or how far off we were too. All right, so that's you you another one the yeah i like that that's that uh the bearded arrow is exactly perfect so the bearded arrow that's definitely like money that's that was definitely what it was it was me shooting arrow it was leandro barbosa making the three from deep and you know i just had to let him know that that's what he did and i came all the way back to about the beard right here and i let it go and uh obviously it was good so um, you guys were right on with that one for sure. Perfect. I'm glad that I said right that one right after the lawnmower, so we were yeah. able to redeem pretty quickly. All right, so I just sent you another one room. from LB as well. Another Leandro Barbosa play. The windmill definitely worked. That was I, I don't know what that one is. Sometimes like when it happens, I'm just not sure what the heck's going on. I think at that moment in time, I just made a really good three and I just kind of spun my arm around and I didn't know I had that much shoulder mobility, honestly. But a uh, windmill windmill definitely works for the for that one. I yeah. mean it's gotta be hard to come up with so many different reactions because yeah. I mean we just saw two reactions to Leandro Barbosa threes. So yeah. and I can knock them down all the time. So yeah. I can really imagine like do you think of things sometimes when you're not playing, like if you're just chilling at home of things that you can incorporate, or is it all just natural? Nothing was rehearsed. Not one, not one reaction that I ever had has like necessarily been rehearsed at all. Like I'm never, I'm not in the mirror practicing this stuff. It just kind of happens, and you know what I mean. It's 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 the passion that comes with it. I think what that's what makes it so fun is just it's real raw emotion. For sure. I love that. Although I'm a fan. I'm a fan. End of the day, I'm, just, I'm I'm a big. That's why I always tell people why I have so much fun out there because I'm a fan of the game. Like. If you're on that bench and you're sitting there ready to get in, you're watching the best players in the world play the game of basketball. It's a ton of fun. Big facts. 
I will say though, it would be really fun if you were in the mirror practicing practicing yeah. reactions. If we could be a fly on the wall <laughs> sure. and see the outtakes of that, it would be quite entertaining. I'm not gonna lie. Big big, big game tonight. What am I gonna pull off? And I'm like staring in the mirror at myself, like, okay, today I'm gonna go win Mirror Bearded Arrow. Um, definitely not the lawnmower because that's not a real thing. But yeah, I, I get you. I get you for sure. <laughs> it's like part of your pregame uh, ritual. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> All right, so this next one is uh, for our guy, Devin Booker. Okay. Nice little celebration there. All right, let me take a look. That's a tough bucket. That's a tough bucket. The muscle man was spot on again. I think that's what it was. It was just you taking it to the basket, you're going in there through the contact, you got to flex. And I think that's that's where that one definitely came off with. So I'm cool with muscle man, but big flexor would be good too. Uh, yeah. I think that could have, yeah. yeah. Man, we sh I'm telling you, if only hindsight 2020, we should have just come to you for, for sure. You're just killing it right now. Yeah, yeah. No, for real. It's like the naming is, I mean, that's almost as important as the celebration itself. I agree, because it, it helps with the longevity of it and just, like, letting people yeah. into that space a little more and know. So yeah. one thing that I did, I'm, I just sent you two more, but before you look at it, okay. one thing that I really loved about these reactions and you kind of starting it with that Suns team is how they also really bought into it, and then the tables turn. And every time you had a yeah. big the bench was on their feet. So these next two videos are of reactions from your teammates for you. So go take a look. Okay. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so we have lose your mind and I love, it. I love it. I love it, man. Looking. Oh, that that the the Celtics one is obviously the game that I I was. Like referring to it's probably my favorite game in the Suns jersey ever. Um, and like that moment right there just showed like how close that team kind of was. We didn't have as much success as we wanted to on the court, but we were really close. And uh, it just showed that, you know what I'm saying? That's, that's love right there. When you can get the love back after showing the love. So it was, it was really cool to see both of those clips again. So I'm glad that I got to bring back a little bit of nostalgia for you with those clips. But yeah. I'm curious, when you have teammates who are so – openly supportive whether it's in reactions or just vocally within the media or even not in public but in the locker room or at practices mm -hmm. how much does that help your confidence and how much does that bring the team together uh, i think it brings together a lot you know obviously you still got to have a team out there that's capable of, of of winning games you know what i'm saying but just just having that camaraderie just you, you play harder because you're playing for somebody that you care about. You know what I'm saying? Anytime there's something that you really care about, you're going to push through a little bit harder and, and, and fight that extra inch and, and dive on that loose ball and celebrate even harder because that person you're in the trenches with and they're showing the love that you show back. So, like, it's, 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 it's an amazing feeling. I think that's what's so great about team sports is the fact that you rely on everybody else in that locker room in order to be great. You can be as good as you want to be as an individual player, but if there's no cohesiveness with the team or, you know what I'm saying, decent camaraderie, then uh, it just, it's, it's hard to be really successful all the way. So it's, it's really cool to, to have that. All right, so I have one last clip to send you, but this one, I want a reaction from you. If you were okay. there on the bench when this happened, what would your reaction have been like? Okay. So, I'm gonna send this over right now. Oh, oh, oh. Wow. That's easy. It'd have been like, are you serious? I probably would have jumped down my seat. I didn't even know he had bounced like that. I'd be like, I. It would just be the. It would be the biggest surprise face. Hold my head. Oh my gosh. Maybe like take the the shooting shirt off and throw it on the ground or something like that. I don't know. I might get a technical foul for that one. I might have to run on the court. And, we and, would have started a GoFundMe to pay for that technical foul. Appreciate it. All right, for sure. Yeah, appreciate it. Yeah, definitely. I, I'd, I'd have lost my, I'd have lost my mind for sure. I yeah. lost my mind. It's like you said, you didn't even know he could do that. He didn't even realize he could do that. I guess because after that game, when we talked to him, he he literally said, "I don't know how I did that. Honestly, it's not even in my game, man. It must have just no. been." Mine. 
in his game. So I told you we were going to get into Devin's all-star appearance this year. So here we are. How excited were you when you heard that Devin was finally making his first appearance at an all-star game? Uh, about time, right? I mean, geez, he's been this good for this long. And um, I was talking to, like I said, we were, had conversations the whole year and we were like tracking it. And I never wanted to like really call him and ask him about it. Like I try to not talk about it because it's like, one, I didn't want to jinx it. And two, I didn't want it to be like this big rise and a disappointment at the end. But uh, it all worked out at the end of the day. You know, I mean, it's, it's a testament to obviously his hard work and everything that he's done on the court as a player. But I think another piece of it is, being a good person, you know what I mean? And being a good role model and somebody that, that people want to see do well and see, um, you know what I'm saying, be successful. And so that's what being an all-star is really about. And I think he obviously checks off all the boxes and just really excited for his first one to be here. I got the Devin Booker um, all-star jersey hanging up in the closet right now. I got to get it over to him to sign it one of these days. But uh, it's it was just amazing to be able to see him have that moment. And I, I honestly, for the Suns fans to have that too, to be able to have an all-star on my team is, is a really big deal. And uh, I'm, I'm really happy for him. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that jersey because I know you tweeted at us that you need I had to. We came through though. You so oh, you did. When you do get it autographed, you should take a picture of it and send it to us so that we can share it out because Got you. I know that's like everyone wanted that jersey. And I can tell you, we went to the team shop in Chicago mm -hmm. Every single day we were there, they ran out of B's. I think it was B's or D's or something like that because so many fans were going in asking them to make Devin Booker jerseys that they ran out like the first day. Wow. And so it was so hard to get your hands on a Devin Booker jersey wow. that everyone was like, I need more, I need more. And the NBA yeah. were like, we don't have the, the letters <laughs> to make this because everybody wants one. That's so awesome. Like I said, it's just crazy that it happened. Um, wish I could have been there, but um, it was it was amazing. I'm sure I'll be a, one of the other ones, the the the, the, the tens to twenties he'll get. So um, I'll be there one of them. So absolutely. So where were you exactly during the All Star game this year? Where was I during the All Star game? We actually got a break to come home, but it was such a short break that I couldn't swing coming home, seeing the fam, and going to Chicago at the same time. Uh, so I think I was I was just here in Phoenix okay. watching the game. I ended up watching the game and called him and talked to him and you know what I'm saying and congratulated him and all that stuff. So it was, it was awesome. It was really cool. Okay, so I want to know a little bit more about your time playing overseas in Russia. First things first, what is the fan base like over there, and how fun or different is it playing in Russia? The local fans are insane. Like. They get to it. They they show up, large numbers. They're loud. They're proud of the team, and they they, they truly love the the team and the organization. And uh, their 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 media group and and fan interaction group. It's it's really good too. And they really keep everybody engaged. And uh, the fans show so much love. Like I'm shout out to all the local fam out there. Um, I'm sure you guys are gonna get the chance to see this in some way, shape, or form. And I want to shout out you guys and. Uh, but no, seriously, it was it was a lot of luck, and they really love basketball, and I had a ton of fun playing there last year. What was the language barrier like, or was there not really one for your specific kind of day to day? Uh, I mean, all of my teammates spoke English, you know what I mean. So enough English to be conversational if you wanted to have the conversation. The training staff and coaching staff was the same way. Um, obviously, throughout the city, I'm, I wasn't in Moscow, so obviously Moscow is a much more international city than, than Krasnodar was. But uh, for the most part, I was able to get around and do what I needed to do. Sometimes use my translator app on my phone, but I picked up pieces of the language too. So I, I, I wouldn't say I was conversational, but I could definitely order food or find the bathroom or get a taxi or stuff like that. So I, uh, I, I learned as I went along. And I, if I do end up going back there um, at some point, I definitely want to get lessons and learn Russian because like, why not? Because from there, I might as well learn the language. So. Yeah, exactly. Would, would that be your third one? Because you've got Spanish down pretty good, too. Yeah. Three. It would be my third. That would be three. That's impressive. I still am very impressed that you are fluent in Spanish. I'm also a little bit bummed because I was thinking about the Mexico City game that we went to. Mm -hmm. I feel like I didn't know the extent 
extent of how well your Spanish was when we went down there, or else I would have made you speak to us in Spanish a lot more. <laughs> I think you did it on purpose. They sent me, I did. They sent me down <laughs> before the game that year as an ambassador. And I did like a whole interview thing in Spanish. And like, I was like nervous and worried. I'm calling my dad, like, dad, like, I'm really about to go represent basically the whole NBA <laughs> in this global, like, kind of thing. And just kind of there and did it. And it was fun. I, I mean, it's, it's cool that I can speak it for sure. And you're gassing me up. I don't think I'm that good, but uh, <laughs> definitely. We can, can, can speak it a little bit. So. Uh, well, just start thinking because I'm going to put you on the spot later in this uh, podcast, but I'll give you a, a smidge of a heads up for that. Okay. Before we <laughs> move on, I want to know about the food in Russia. How is it? What were some of your favorite meals that you ate over there? Um, I'm a foodie, I'd say. So I like always down to try stuff. So there was nothing that I like. There was stuff that I looked at. And I was like, eh, maybe I shouldn't try that. But I'm like, buy into the culture buy into the culture so like i ate like pig ears some beef tongue what else have i eaten uh, wait, 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 wait hold on pig ears yeah like how yeah. how were they cooked like a they're, they're like pickled okay and they're like kind of chewy and they have like a good consistency it tastes a lot like bacon honestly okay so tough um i was thinking more like a pork rind <clears throat> so okay, more like a bacon yeah, they actually like the meat is like on there and you can, it's, it's, it's actually, it wasn't too bad. Um, I'd say my favorite dishes are they, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty much American food, I guess, except not American food. I mean, they had steak, I had some really good steak places. There's Asian food everywhere you go, like Asian fusion type places. There is no Mexican food in Russia. And if you see a Mexican restaurant on like a Yelp in Russia, I'd say don't go because I had a couple of bad experiences trying to find myself a burrito or a taco on Tuesday. So that's when I started making my own. Um, but for the most part, the food is great. And I, I really got a chance to, to throw down in the kitchen too. So I was cooking a lot and making my own meals and trying stuff out and burning the house down almost a couple of times. But, you know, I made it work. So. All right. So what's in your, uh, what's in your arsenal here? What, what, what have you mastered? I make a mean, like, red green pasta so like similar to how you do like a red and green enchilada okay. i did like a, i do a pesto rosa and just like a classic pesto i mix them together and then i prepare it with shrimp so i have the shrimp i hate tails on my shrimp so i make sure the tails are off before i do it and i saute it with some garlic lemon and butter and throw it all together and it's amazing i used to eat that probably two or three times a week well that's awesome i'm proud of you you're you're <laughs> You surpassed me in the kitchen with just that one meal, so. Huh? Don't cook at all? I mean, no. Like, I'm good at, like, if it's, I no. Let's yeah. Say, no, I can do breakfast. I can do really good breakfast, so, like, eggs, bacon, waffles, pancakes, things like that. But other than that, I'm really good at, like, ordering food, and I'm really good at reheating food. So. Got it. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's the problem. The thing I found, I don't necessarily love leftovers, so that's why I had to, like, struggle to find the perfect portion where, like, I eat it now and then eat it tomorrow and then I'm done with it, so. I feel you on that, and plus I feel like it's kind of hard to make, like, everything you go to the grocery store, I'm getting on a tangent here, but it's always for, like, a family. Yeah. So when you're cooking for one or two people, yeah. it's like, I don't know how, like, I get it, it's basic math, but also it's just, like, so much extra work <laughs> the recipe calls for this specific amount and if you don't do it and i come down to taste bad i'm just like dang i wish i would have just stuck to the whole thing so exactly it's like it's not even worth i'm not that good so it's not worth trying to finesse this recipe to fit into my yeah. life. i'm just gonna make enough for six people and then hopefully i eat it um <laughs> So that's my cooking tangent. Anyway, we're going to take a break and give a little love to our sponsors. So fans, you may be thinking that during this time of social distancing, you don't have to really be worried about whether or not your child is being bullied or bullying others. But we all know that cyberbullying exists and it happens through social media. It happens through text messages and emails. And if you want to learn more about how to protect your kids from cyberbullying or yourself, just head on over to muststopbullying.org for a lot of great tips and help. Um, question, how's Pablo and the family? Pablo's good, he's actually, come here, come on. 
Come here. You say hi to everybody. Come on, get up. Say hi. Hi, Pablo. <laughs> He's good, though. Get down. He's good. He's great. You know, obviously, he couldn't go out there with me to Russia this year just because logistically it just didn't work out too well. Um, but uh, my parents took care of him. They're doing great. Mom's still mom. Dad's still dad. And my brother's now a, a firefighter. And I'm super proud of, of that and uh, excited for him. Um, but yeah, no, everybody's good, which is awesome. It's a, it's a, it's a big time de-stressor when, when the fam's good. So. Yes, I can only imagine, especially with being overseas and the time difference and trying to communicate in that aspect. So sure. when you did finally get back to Phoenix, how long did it take you to hit up Los Dos Molinos? The day I landed, mom had it. <laughs> it was already there. And obviously, like, we couldn't sit down in the restaurant because I got back. It was the restaurants were, were closed due to the pandemic. But um, the to-go was there. I had my favorite dish. I had the out-of-out of ribs um, with regular beans, not the spicy ones, flour tortilla, and a, a, a big margarita. It was, it was awesome. It was, like, really good. I missed it. Love that that was like day one must have when I got back. And it wasn't even a discussion. Like I was like gonna just be like, whatever, I don't really care. Whatever's at the house, I'm gonna eat it. And she knew it and it was there waiting for me. That's like how you know your mom is is really on it. So Yeah. That's 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 mom love for real. Thanks, mom. (laughs) So when you are not in Phoenix, what do you miss the most about Phoenix other than Mexican food and family? Ah, what I mean, just like little stuff. I think just stuff you don't wouldn't even realize, like the skyline, for instance, or like the lights on top of South Mountain. I mean, it sounds like super corny, but like I just miss that. I miss to be able to interact with people in the city because I think these are probably some of the best people in the whole United States. Like I just miss the the, the community type of feel and stuff like that that you have around the valley. And uh, you know, it's 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 really you know what I'm saying. You can't really put it to words but um yeah it's, it's a lot of stuff and the mexican food too again so i mean i'm with you on that one i it would be so hard to move to some place that did not have mexican food because i probably have some sort of a mexican dish at least two three times a week yeah like it's I'd a right. staple in my diet now for sure so good all right so alan before i let you go all, right. All of the fans kept telling me to ask you this question. So, yeah. Big Sauce's favorite sauce is? Whew, big Sauce's favorite sauce. Oh, man. It's like a, there's so many. I'm a, like, Big Sauce loves sauce. Like, I absolutely love sauce. So, I like soy sauce. I like uh, buffalo sauce. I like barbecue sauce. Like if I'm going to Chick-fil-A and I'm getting a, let's say a 10 piece nugget or whatever it is, I think I'm getting four sauces. I'm getting four different sauces. So if I had to pick one, I got to go hot sauce. Hot sauce is one for sure. Okay. What's your go-to hot sauce? You can't come on. Just let me generalize this, please. (laughs) Sorry, Suns fans. Y'all trying to get me so specific in here right now. Um, Favorite hot sauce, yeah, I think it varies. So I go through phases. Like right now, I'm looking at a bottle of Cholula on the table that I just had with some flour child earlier today. But um, I also have Frank's Red Hot in the, in, the, in the fridge, too. And I think that's number one for me is, is Red Hot. So Frank's Red Hot is, is number one for that's sure. A solid choice. Cholula is also a great choice, too. I was just making sure you didn't say, like, Tabasco. Uh-uh. Um, that's not tobacco, real hot sauce. But also throw in a little bit of shade of Tabasco. That's not... That's not a real hot sauce. It is a vinegar pepper sauce. And I want people to understand that. So if I ask the waitress, hey, you guys have hot sauce? And they say, yeah, we have Tabasco. I kind of look at them crazy like, you don't have hot sauce then. Yeah, no. So, but bring it anyway, please. My guy. Big sauce. Thank you so much. Okay, so I told you I was going to put you on the spot with your Spanish. <laughs> so leave us with a message to Suns fans. I don't have you do it in English. And I'm going to have to do it in Spanish. <laughs> uh, hey, Suns fans. Thanks so much for your constant support throughout the years. Wish you guys nothing but the best. And um, go Suns. Oh, I got to do that in Spanish now. Um, a la gente uh, de los Phoenix Suns, uh, que vayan bien con todo en el futuro. 
gracias por um, la amor y amistad que, que me ponen a mí y mi familia y a uh, cosas. Muy bien. Gracias. <laughs> Alan, thank you so much for hanging out with us. It's been so much fun catching up with you. And literally, I know I keep saying last thing, last thing, but this one I promise is the last thing. I'm going to read this to you um, from a Suns fan. And they said, Alan is the coolest hometown kid and Phoenix will forever have his back. Just tell him we love him. And I'm going to leave you with that. Thanks so much. See ya. Appreciate Bye, it. Bye.